Hi friends, welcome to Ivy's Fortress. It's me, Shante, your reader and friend. And today we have our book, Dr. Rosie Helps the Animals. But before we get started into that, let's sing our friend's song. Get your friend's fingers ready. One, two, three, go. Friends, friends, one, two, three. All my friends are here with me. You're my friend and you're my friend. You're my friend, you're all my friends. Friends, friends, one, two, three. All my friends are here with me so much better you guys are learning every single time well here we have dr rosie helps the animals written by jennifer wellborn and illustrated by rosalia mh now i love this book for the simple reason that the main character rosie dr rosie that is has pink hair hardly do we ever see children with pink hair and that is a very creative illustration so big props to rosalia for making that creative choice so let's go ahead and get started because you know i can talk rosie loved to help animals just like her mom on days that weren't so busy rosie's mom let her watch and ask questions rosie had lots of questions Rosie's mom always looked carefully to see what was wrong. It looks like this poor puppy has a laceration on his ear, mom told Rosie. That means he has a small cut. As Rosie watched her mom wash the cut and then got a jar of honey. Why are you giving the puppy honey? Rosie asked. This special honey kills germs, her mom explained. Remember when I gave you tea with your honey for your sore throat? Rosie nodded. The honey had made her throat feel better. Now what are you doing? Rosie asked. I'm checking to make sure everything else is okay, Mom said. Do you have to use this cactus on the puppy? Rosie asked, eating a plant in the corner of the room. Mom smiled. It's not a cactus, it's an aloe plant. The liquid in the leaves helps the skin feel better. Rosie looked around some more. What's this hat for? It's called a compress, Mom explained. If you put ice inside, it can help bring down swelling. If you put hot water inside, it can help with pain. Sometimes people use natural treatments such as honey, aloe, ice, and heat to help animals feel better. Mom took the compress and put it on Rosie's head so she could see what it felt like. Rosie giggled. She thought it looked like a silly hat. <laughs> it is a silly hat. After watching her mom, Rosie felt confident enough to help real live animals. Hi, Rabbit. Why are you scratching your ears? Do they hurt you? Rosie could not imagine having an earache with ears that big. Rosie lifted one ear and peered inside. They look very red. Rosie remembered how the liquid from an aloe plant can help skin feel better. So she put some in the rabbit's ears, then rubbed them a bit. There you go, rabbit. You'll feel better in no time. It looks like she put the liquid in the syringe to put on the rabbit's ears. Behind her, Rosie heard a grunt. She turned and saw a pig. Poor pig. Look at your big tummy. Did you eat too much? Lie down and rest and no more snacking. Rosie kissed the pig's tummy. Kisses always help. Remember, you should probably keep your mouth off of animals. You never know where they've been. Feeling good about the small animals she'd helped, Rosie set off to find some bigger animals. Soon she spied a group of giraffes they were all eating but one. Poor giraffe, why aren't you eating? Rosie asked. 
looks like he is having a bad cold. His nose is running and his eyes are watering. Rosie thought for a minute. Sometimes when her throat hurt, she didn't like to eat either. She wondered if that might be the giraffe's problem. Rosie wanted to take a look, but the giraffe was really tall. Oh my, Rosie said when she finally got a look inside the giraffe's throat. You do have a very long, very sore throat. Rosie remembered how tea with honey had helped when her throat was sore. Here, try this, she said as she gave the giraffe water with honey in it. Rosie climbed down and set off to find other big animals. Suddenly, she felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned around to see an elephant panting. Why are you breathing like that? Rosie asked, is your trunk stuffed? Rosie thought it might be awful to have su a stuffy nose that big. Hmm, she thought, when my nose is stuffed, mom puts salt water in it. Do me a favor, ask your parents or your guardians what a neti pot is. Anyway, back to the story. By the time Rosie finished with the elephant, she was hot and thirsty. She decided to look for water. As she was driving, she came up upon some ostriches running really fast. All of them, but one. Rosie slowed down to get a closer look and saw that the ostrich was limping. It had skinned its knee. Silly ostrich, did you fall while you were running? Rosie put a dollop of honey on the knee and an ostrich sized bandage on top. A bandage always helps. Now try to slow down, okay? Rosie tried to pat the ostrich on the back, but her hand got lost in its fluffy feathers. I heard that ostriches have a sense of humor. Finally, Rosie reached a stream. As she bent down to get some water, she spotted a baby crocodile. It was drooling and its mouth looked swollen. Rosie wondered if the crocodile might be getting more teeth, even though it already had so many. Ever so carefully, she pried open its mouth. Poor guy. Your new teeth are making your gums sore. Rosie remembered when her baby brother was seething. Her mom had given him something cold to chew on. Then she had rubbed his gums. Rosie didn't have anything cold with her, so she carefully rubbed its gums with her finger. Rosie finished with the crocodile and took a sip of water, but she was still hot, so she decided to take a dip in the ocean. As she swam, she came across an octopus holding its head with all its arms. Rosie wondered what the octopus was hiding. She bravely peeled two of the arms away and saw what was wrong. Now I see, you have a big bump on your head. Did you bump it in your den? Rosie remembered the silly hat her mom had put on her head. Maybe it could help with a swollen bump. She gently put it on the octopus's head and held it in place. Looking up, Rosie saw a spotted beluga whale watching her curiously. She had never heard of a spotted beluga, and she always wanted to touch a beluga's soft skin, so she swam closer. Suddenly, Rosie realized that the spots were not spots at all, but patches of rashes. Rosie remembered having a rash once. It had been itchy, and she had been miserable. Then she remembered how aloe liquid had helped when the rabbit's ears hurt. Maybe aloe could help with an itchy rash as well. So she gently rubbed the piece of aloe leaf on a rash pad. Soon, the beluga well began to feel better. Rosie's pretty good at this. Rosie swam to the surface of the water. It was time to go home. It was late and she was hungry. As she surfaced, she noticed an iceberg floating by. She quickly climbed on hoping the iceberg would float her back home. But there were two other travelers on the iceberg. One was a shivering polar bear. The other was a snowy owl. Rosie found it strange that a polar bear with its thick, warm coat would be shivering. But she recalled when she had both been hot and shivering at the same time. 
It was when she had a fever. Poor bear. I think you might have a fever. Rosie knew there was only one way to tell. She had to take the bear's temperature. Yes, you do. Lie down, get some rest. Make sure to drink plenty of water. Next to her, the owl let out a big sneeze. Rosie saw that its eyes were swollen and red. That's how I look when I pet a cat, Rosie thought. Maybe the owl has allergies like me. Rosie noticed that the owl was awfully close to the polar bear. Maybe it was allergic to the polar bear. Rosie carefully opened the owl's eyelids and put some salt drops inside. Then she got the hat and put it under her parka to warm it up. When it felt nice and warm, she gently placed it over the owl's eye. Since owls were used to the darkness, it didn't seem to mind. Then she gave the owl a big hug. It's a special day when you can hug an owl, she thought. I'm sure it is. They're such sweet creatures. Oh. Rosie, Rosie, Rosie jumped, startled by the noise. Time to get up. Looks like you had a good nap. I guess you were tired, huh? Rosie rubbed her eyes. She had fallen asleep in her mom's exam room. Now that you're rested, I thought you might like to come with me. I just got a call about a sweet, excuse me. I just got a call about a sick polar bear on an iceberg who needs our help. The end. Wow. Now there's something I want to talk about that we saw commonly or read commonly in this book. Rosie used her own personal experiences with her sickness to help the animals. So the next time you see a sad or upset friend, maybe that secludes themselves, which means gets away from the crowd and gets in a private place to express their feelings, try to use some of your own personal experiences how you made yourself happy, glad, or at least at peace when you were sad and alone. That way we can work together to make each other better or healthier. Well, that's all I got today, friends. I'll catch you next time. Bye.